Hello, and welcome to Boots to Reboots, the place most remakes come to die. What are you doing? He thinks he's in a gunfight because of the last remake I watched, the 1999 remake of The Mummy, which originally starred the legendary Boris Karloff. I like Boris Karloff. Me too. Unfortunately, the original Mummy, to me, isn't as good as the Frankenstein movies, but still holds its place in history. The Mummy was released in 1932, one year after the success of Dracula. And if you pay attention, the Mummy is pretty much ripping off the story of Dracula. They just replaced the vampire with a mummy. It also doesn't help that Edward Van Sloan, who played Professor Van Helsing in Dracula, also plays Dr. Muller in The Mummy. It really is the same character. A dull leading lady and a thrown-in two-dimensional love interest also hurts the likability of the original. What saves the movie? Boris Karloff. When we first see him, he's just standing in the sarcophagus with the makeup on, which was brilliantly done by Jack Pierce who brought a lot of the Universal monsters to life. Pierce did a great job making Karloff look like a realistic, ancient mummy. Some credit should be given to Karloff because of his already iconic, sunken facial features. It could be a dummy in there for all you know until he opens his eyes. From the moment Imhotep, aka Ardith Bay, is on screen, you can feel the amazing presence of Karloff. If there's one thing I'll always remember from this movie, it's the spectacular shot of his mesmerizing eyes. So in 1999, they decided to remake this Universal Monster movie. Well, let's just say that this film is an entirely different experience. The one-sentence synopsis for the movie is the same, ancient mummy comes to life and wants to resurrect his dead girlfriend, but there's so much more going on in the remake. The universal monster tone is thrown out the window and instead we get an Indiana Jones movie with an evil mummy as the villain. Like most universal monster movies, Imhotep was a sympathetic, tragic character. He was trying to raise a lost loved one. In the remake, yeah, he wants to be reunited with his love, but man, he's an evil dildo. <laughs> The original Mummy is very simple. Ardith Bay wants to resurrect Aung San Moon and the entire movie centers around that simple premise. In the remake you have an assassinated pharaoh, sexy women, war, betrayal, gunfights, booby traps, gunfights, lost city of the dead, ancient society sworn to prevent the apocalypse, Black Book of the Dead, Gunfights, Gold Book of Life, Plates, Lots of Murder, Corny Humor, Chase Scenes, Zombies, Hungry Bugs, Gunfights, Even More Mummies, and throwing guns when they have no ammo. They pretty much took the premise of the original Mummy and changed it from a horror film into a giant epic adventure movie FULL OF STUFF! In a lot of ways, it's a nice update to the old film. When you think about mummies, you think archaeological digs, booby traps, curses, and treasure. And then in other ways, it's turned into a big dumb action movie. So, what did I like about this remake? Girls wearing nothing but body paint. The three shots with the white kitty. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, I liked what they did with the character Rick O'Connell. This character and his backstory is completely invented for this movie. He's an American serving in the French Foreign Legion who goes to jail and is going to be hanged for having too good of a time. 
George, George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. The female lead character, Evelyn, literally saves Rick's neck because she's looking for Humanatra, the city of the dead, after finding a map in a key box. The box. You opened it. We can Lucky for Rick, he knows its location. The map, the map, I forgot the map! Relax! Oh. I'm the map. I'm the map, 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 I'm the map. <gasps> So far, this is a pretty good setup to the movie. Another plus is that Rick is constantly beating the crap out of the annoying characters. Rick I also really like the League of Pharaoh's bodyguards known as the Magi who protect the City of the Dead thousands of years later. Actually, I just like the character Ardith Bey who is their leader. That's right, they took Imhotep's alias from the original and gave the name to a new character in the remake. He's pretty badass even though he is a no good he bitch. In the original, Imhotep walks out of his sarcophagus, disappears for 10 years and shows up looking kind of alive. Here the mummy doesn't wait so long to accomplish his goal, and what's cool is that he regenerates after killing each of the people who opened the cursed box. It kind of reminded me of Uncle Frank from Hellraiser. See, it's making me whole again. Every drop of blood you spill puts more flesh on my bones. <laughs> I like the regeneration stuff as well as the jars of Anxuna Moon's organs that he has to get back. It gives Imhotep a checklist of goals that he has to accomplish. Yes, simple is oftentimes more, but I like how everybody in the remake has a lot more to do. And while I'm not a fan of CGI, the whole sand face chasing the airplane thing was pretty creative and one of the more memorable moments from the remake. I love the whole sand wall trick, it was beautiful, you bastard. Now let's move on to the things that I didn't like about this remake. Why is this happening? <laughs> First off, I didn't care for the annoying, cliched, two-dimensional characters who are there for comic relief. This includes that fat guy and Evelyn's obnoxious brother, Jonathan. It's hard to like one of the main characters when the first time you see them, they're desecrating dead bodies in a museum. That just tells me that he is disrespectful, reckless, and a douche. And why is it that Hollywood thinks we like cliched, clumsy characters? This is what happens the first time we meet Evelyn. Yes, because we automatically like clumsy people because they're supposed to be charming and quirky or something. In real life, we call those people a nuisance. You are a catastrophe! Later in the film, there's this big race to see who will be the first team to reach Humanoptera. Our main characters were left without horses, so they bought some camels in town. First off, horses can run anywhere from 30 to 50 miles an hour. That's right, science. A camel can only run 25 to 40 miles per hour, yet our main characters win the race despite riding the slower animal. I'm okay with suspending my disbelief with fantastical things like mummies coming back to life, but it's hard to ignore the little illogical things in this movie. We also have a new menace in the form of scarab beetles. I slowly ate him alive. Very slowly. <laughs> While the scarab beetles are there to add a new element of danger to the movie, the threat lacks any punch because they're clearly computer generated. What 
was that? What, what, what was what? I just saw the head of a penis. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Take a look. Take a look back at it. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh. Boris eyes, no. Will I be a son of a bitch? That's his penis slipping out. There's a visible penis in the mummy. What does it mean? 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 Why is it there? What does it mean? Why? I also don't like the fact that the mummy is completely computer generated because it looks really fake and what's worse is the noises that he makes. Are those animal noises? Also why is his voice deeper and scarier? It makes as much sense as Bale's Batman voice. I wish they would have kept the scroll in the original instead of turning it into the Black Book of the Dead. A scroll just seems more ancient Egyptian to me. The movie also gets a little too ridiculous at the end because Imhotep resurrects his priest to fight Rick Jonathan and Ardith Bay. Did we really need multiple mummies in this movie? They should have kept it simple and only used Imhotep. It's called The Mummy. Singular. So after watching the original Boris Karloff Mummy movie and the remake starring Brendan Fraser, what do I think? Well, one big difference is the noise level. Like I said, this movie is turned up to 11 with all the stuff they've added to the story. And even though it's bigger and sillier than the original, at least the movie is somewhat aware of it. No harm ever came from reading a book. That happens a lot around here. At times it's almost too predictable because this type of adventure movie has been played out before. Did we really need all the walls and doors to seal off the exits to the pyramid? No, but it's an adventure movie and that type of thing happens in those. There's not as many nods to the original as I would have liked. My favorite would be when Renfield, uh, I mean Benny, says Imhotep doesn't like to be touched because that's taken directly from a scene in the original. Your pardon, I dislike to be touched. An Eastern prejudice. I'm with you. But in Simotep does not like to be touched. A silly Eastern superstition, I'm afraid. There is one small yet odd difference between the two movies. In the original, Imhotep has a white cat because Egyptians worshipped them. In the remake, Imhotep flips his shit when he sees Evelyn's white cat. <laughs> Why did the cat become kryptonite to mummies? Question. Why doesn't he like cats? Well, cats are the guardians of the underworld. He will fear them until he is fully regenerated. And then he will fear nothing. Yeah, and you know how he gets himself fully regenerated? By killing everyone who opened that chest. And suck 
Fuck it, I'm dry, that's how. Fuck it, I'm dry, that's how. Fuck it, I'm dry, that's how. If I had to rate this movie, I'd give it like a 6.5. It'd be higher if it had a more serious tone, more believable characters, didn't clutter up the plot by throwing as much as they could into the movie, and used more practical effects over CGI. <laughs> With that said, does this film deserve the boot? It's close, but I'd say no. It'd be easy to write this film off as another typical big Hollywood action movie, but it accomplishes my main rule to remaking a movie. Take the one-sentence synopsis of the original, build upon it, and make it your own. The 1999 remake of The Mummy does just that. In my last review, the remake of Psycho got crushed by the boot because it was shot for shot the same as the original. That film was a good example of what not to do with a remake. The Mummy, on the other hand, while not perfect, is a decent attempt and justified with all the new elements even if they went overboard with it. <laughs> The 1999 remake of The Mummy has been spared. Mummies. And if they decide to reboot this in a couple years, which will more than likely happen, let's hope for a more serious tone. This has been Boots to Reboots, the place most remakes come to die. Thanks for watching. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do